Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is Liz McGee, and I have a uh, teaching. I'm going to impart this afternoon. I want to say Shabbat Shalom. It is uh, Sabbath. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. I have meat. I have meat prepared again. For your dining such, whatever. Uh, I'm going to try and unpack. As I said, I'm really going to go deep into the key. Uh, the serpent. Okay, I'm going to call this teaching the serpent made me do it. I really want to unpack a little bit the serpent. I want to unpack with fire. A lot of these. Okay, so I am all about the mysteries, the sod level understanding, the encryptedness that is in the text that tells the the true story, the behind the scenes story, the deeper understanding. Because we're to grow up into Christ. We're in a huge war. And it's coming, the wrap up is coming so fast. So this is so important. I believe the elect, we really need to get a handle here. Anyways, uh, so just thank you for sticking with me, hopefully through this whole thing. So let me just start because I, you know, I'm just really trying to get the big picture to make sure I have a large correct overview and then keep coming down into more specifics of this thing. So I do believe in the keys, okay? There is a total encryptedness in all my teachings. Listen to the one I did in the oral Torah. I have a whole playlist on um, the keys, the sealed knowledge. Daniel is very clear that the elect of the last days will come into full understanding, be able to unseal. We are in a time of unsealing. Everything is that's been hidden is coming out into the open. So anyway, this is a quote from the, I believe it's the Apocalypse of John, because sometimes when I cut and paste, I don't always get where I'm getting it from. So anyways, but I believe it is. So this is on the keys just to tell you, and I've read this before in some of mine, I want to go over it again. So you can understand a little bit what I'm saying. We know that Yeshua is the light of life, like he is the light. He is the logos. He is the word. These are the, some of the biggest um, archetypes. But it goes on to here say that this, this cross of light, Yeshua, is sometimes called, um, he is sometimes called mind, sometimes Yeshua, sometimes Christ, <laughs> sometimes door, sometimes the way, sometimes bread, sometimes seed, sometimes resurrection, Sometimes son, sometimes father, sometimes spirit. Are you done yet? I mean, I'm not even done yet. Okay, sometimes truth, sometimes faith, sometimes grace. And by these names, he is called, uh, he is shown to men, and that he is in truth. So, I mean, what are you going to do with all that? that? See, this is why it's taking me years. So, like, what are they talking about? So, anyways, there now, this is where we're going to go. Back in it says that, um, and there, and there is wisdom. And the wisdom is like how to, like how to, what to, how to make sense of all this. Okay. Now there is the right hand, and there is the left hand. Okay, so this is a, you know, even Yeshua's disciples asked him, "We're going to get to sit on your right hand when it's all wrapped up, or, you know, on the left." So this is a concept. So let's try to unpack it just really quickly. And there are the left powers, authorities, lordships, demons, threatenings, wraths, devils, Satan, and the lower root, hence the nature of all things that come into being preceded. So there's a left side that has historically always been associated with um, the serpent. It's always been associated with uh, wickedness, evil, the dark side, the evil inclination, uh, judgment, and fire. Okay, and then verses in, and he used some of the words here. There's authority, lordships, demons, threatenings, wraths, devils, satans, um, every evil word. Okay, that's sort of the left side. It's kind of bad, rather. Right? <laughs> then you have the right side, which flow, you know, oil and honey, goodness, mercy, um, blessings, life, uh, all the positives. 
Okay, and we were even, there's, there's the left side of cursing. There's the right side of blessing. Okay, so this is all a very philosophical, Hebraic, biblical concept. Okay, so when you're, like I said, so I'm trying, I'm gonna, I'm really trying, I'm gonna write a book, I swear I am, you should see where I'm totally organized here. I'm not in my own home, and I'm in a place, I've gone away, so to speak, where it's quiet, and I can focus, and I can get organized, because it's very hard for me. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> Anyways, but some of these words, just to give you one more, sense of how concepts are encrypted. Now, why the rabbis did this? Why Yahweh had the, I think just because we are in a war, I'm not even going to go into this. There is, there's good reason for this because see, nothing can happen before it's time. So you hide these things in a quote unquote, a mystery side level. So when it's time comes for this truth, this revelation, this understanding to come forward, that's the job of the prophets and the sages uh, to bring it forward. This is like Paul said, I have, I understood a mystery. And that's why he came forward with the whole concept of the Gentiles receiving the good news. And we want to go there. Oh, okay. So mountains and hills, I think I've said this before, these are codes. Rams and calves are codes. Sun and moon, fruit trees and forest trees. But you know what that's all talking about? <laughs> Um, and it's on the left side and the right side. It's talking about men and women. It's talking about the, the, and not even literal. Well, sometimes it's literal, but mostly it's the principle, the feminine and the masculine principles, because I've been through this. Yahweh set up very from the first, a binary system that was going to go for it. That, that really is generative. It is reproductive. It produces something you know, a left side and a right side, an X and I've been through all this. This is the concept. But when he wanted to, so mountains and hills, mountains are men, rams are, are masculine, the sun is masculine. Also, Jacob is an archetype for being masculine. Then you get the flip side, you get the hills. The hills are female, calves are female. The moon, we know, is female. Rachel is female. And then fruit trees are female, as opposed to four trees being male. Okay, so I didn't make, this is the way it's all coming down, okay? I'll just, in this, and this is, mostly you're going to get this understanding. The more you read, the more you uh, see how the prophets and sages use these words all through the literature, okay? Um, in the second book of Adam and Eve, which is, uh, it says here, in chapter 1, 8, chapter 1, verse 8. And in that place were many fruit trees and forest trees. Because, see, trees, and I have a whole playlist on trees. <laughs> trees are huge, obviously, in the garden story. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. I mean, obviously, trees, whatever they're representing, are a very important archetype. So in this place, wherever it is, there are fruit trees and there are forest trees. And then the next verse goes, and his sister bare him children. Like, what the heck do those two things have to do with each other? It's because when you understand fruit trees, some are women and forest trees are talking about men. His sister bare him children, and in turn, and in their turn began to multiply by degrees until they filled that place. This is one of the things, you know, I'll have a whole chapter on like the whole vegetative grasses and plants and herbs <laughs> and trees. And, and flowers and lilies and the pomegranates. I mean, all these words that they're, they're using all over the place that are describing in its highest, most esoteric level, the binary, the male and the female, the chokmah and the bina, the, 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 the original, when Yah, when he especially made man, and it's talking about the highest form, the Adam Kadian, male and female. Okay, and that's not what today is all about. I have some teachings on that that begin to unpack that. But what I really want to get to here is now to relate this into, and okay, so Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism is a huge place. Let me let's put it this way. This language, these keys are, these allegorical keys are used largely in the mystical levels, the sad levels, the deeper understandings to talk about 
celestial or the other dimensions. Okay, the Bible talks about angels that live in the celestial place, you know. So what are they and how would you describe them? He uses, Yah uses allegorical, I've been through all this, um, terminology that will help to describe so you can begin to wrap your mind around it, okay? So there is what's called the pillars. There is the, so I said the left side and the right side. The left side is sort of known as the left pillar. And see, when you understand these things from a Hebraic point of view, you can see how so much of this has been co-opted, yes, by the occultists out there. You know, you do have the whole Masonic. They have the two pillars, Boaz and Joaquin, I think it is. Yeah, they're, they're representing, they're having a very dim understanding of the left side and the right side of their function. But in the middle is the middle pillar, okay? And this is a really important principle. And if you don't understand the pillar, so I might just have to say the flat earth is because, I mean, here's another thing, guys. You have to understand. There are no pillars. There's no any kind of concrete pillars out there that are holding this thing up per se. The pillars are representing in here. When you get out of the physics, because there's basically what we're going to deal with over and over again. It gets so complicated. I'm trying to keep it simple. Because even I get totally lost. So it's like four is a big number. Uh, you have four dimensions. There really are four basic dimensions where everything is playing out. We have our natural the world of nature, the carnal, the fleshly, where we are basically here. You've got, um, then you have levels of heavens, okay, or other planes, celestial planes. And this is clearly delineated in, in Jewish Kabbalistic. Uh, even this even relates to Young and when he stole it from the cloud, this whole idea of the different dimensions of our psyche because we are a body, a soul, and a spirit. And then we have above us, if we can get back connected, <laughs> a the realm that we came from. So I want to, so I hope you're still tracking. I'm just trying to give these words are really and truly describing spiritual realities. So you have the left side and the right side and you have a middle pillar and in this middle pillar yeshua that's why he says he is our peace he is the middle pillar he is like the foundation stone he is the uh he's like the hub of the middle pillar and everything comes off of him in that yad hey vav hey okay because it gets yahweh elohim the father is higher up on the hierarchy so to speak our our archetypal mother and father, so to speak. But when you get down to yav hey vav hey, you're getting into a, on the third day, actually, you're getting into a form of materiality or of, of um, life that is, it's getting a little tangible here, okay? Because when you do understand these different levels of principle, and the higher up you go, the more ethereal, the more, it just kind of gets foggy in our brain is what it really is. Like, how can you picture God in his pure essences? He doesn't have form or shape. He's spirit. If when you if, if the world of the mind, it is the world of the intellect, is the world of reason, it's the highest, and it is the highest. Uh, and this is even the Greek philosophers, this is play to the whole thing, the, the world of the mind, reason, there's a place where things are more perfect, the perfect forms, the idealized. This is where everything is bright and shiny and perfect and new and there's no corruption. This is the Godhead, okay? <laughs> but as you come down into materiality, things start happening, okay? Creatures start getting born and they start having, things start happening, okay? So anyways, enough of that. But I have to start here with angels because as it starts coming down, because at the end of the age, see, I believe in a dualism. Uh, you know, this is the yin and the yang, this is the binary, but the dualism that I believe in is biblical in the sense that there's an end game. It's not like, you know, in, I think it's in Second Peter and they're, or is it in Jude, Jude, and they're saying, oh yeah, where's the promise of your coming? You know, you've been saying that forever. 
that's what the naysayer against wants to have you. Oh yeah, you've been saying it's gonna end forever. Well, it is gonna end, okay, and you're there. So this is why it is so important for people, even right now, today, these days, these next couple, this whole series of fall feasts, this whole season we're in, it is so important to, in my opinion, to stop and contemplate and, and figure out which pillar are you rooted in. Seriously, are you, have you made your peace in the middle pillar? As you'll see, I'm saying repentance is the biggest thing that anybody can be doing right now, personally, as a nation, and as a world. We're a mess. But personally, repentance is the name of the game right now. We're coming up in the Day of Atonement. And the whole point of this is, is I finally get down to pack, unpacking fire. Oh, I can never get anywhere. Okay. So let me just start with unpacking this. Because as you start at the top in the, in the divine essences, the divine mind of Yahweh, yeah, the Godhead, uh, there is no corruption. We are made in that image. Ultimately, all Israel comes from that place and we are made in that image and likeness. But as this thing came down and we became in the garden story, because I want to unpack a little, bring this back down to the garden story and to the serpent and to what was going on, because I totally believe in the uh, serpent seed doctrine, so to speak. But I also believe there is so much deeper levelness to this that needs to be flushed out and unpacked a little more. Um, it's all over the literature. And it's in, yes, much of it is definitely encoded and encrypted. And when you understand what you're reading, you'll understand it. But some of it is so out in the open that the, and the rabbis that came was the offspring of Eve and Samuel. Now, who is Samuel? Okay. An angel. He's a principality. He's actually Hasatan. He is the angel of death. Okay. Where does he reside within these three pillars, so to speak? And the three pillars, again, this is just a huge, there's three main ways in which the rabbis depict the whole realm that Yahweh is functioning in from the upper heavens to the middle heavens to, to Hades and hell. You have the tree of life. You have the concept of the three pillars. And you have the concept of the separate tree. The different, this is in Kabbalah, the different tree. Uh, and then you have a concept of the Adam Cave. These are basically all trying depictions, descriptions, using words to, to talk about this whole creative place and to give it a couple things to give it geography, it's north, south, east, and west, height and depth. So you can kind of get an idea that's one way of telling where you are. Are you in the third heaven? Are you talking about Hades under the earth? Are you talking about off the earth plane? Where are you? There's geography to this thing. The rabbis built in different codes to tell you this stuff. There is code words for the different orders of created beings. I'm going to show you there are seven races, or there's different that we basically are dealing with seven species or the seven angelic orders that we're kind of all interfacing with, whether you realize it or not. So, uh, you know, Rabbi Eliezer, you know, Cain was the offspring of of Eve and Samuel. Okay, now that's pretty, I believe in a boots on the ground, a hybrid, that's the goat uh, that was created. But what happened, where, if there's a whole backstory to this of Eve and the serpent in the garden and the allegorical language. So, so I, there's a lot, I mean, Zen Garcia, I think does a great job. I'm kind of unpacking that. I'm not gonna try to, uh, be Zen, so to speak, but I will confirm his research in the sense, but I think that there's two extra levels to go into understanding of this thing. This is from Legend of the Jews, uh, the birth of Cain, wickedness came into the world with the first being born of woman, Cain, the oldest son of Adam, okay? Uh, allegorically here it's spoken of in the Gospel of Thomas. Now, uh, a vine, was planted apart from the father and since it is not established it will be pulled up by its roots and destroyed okay that is talking about the 
And this is whole kind of the hybrid, the hybrid races that has been going on. You get your Nephilim, you get so much stuff in this category, all right? But this, this vine, this root, this plant, this shrub, or even as Yeshua called it, this tear, something that was not planted, was not established, was not originated, was not in the mind of Yahweh, okay, as it came down. This was not his. Okay, so there's so many levels and ways in which you can see this. It is called, and this is why it is really, this is the whole concept where the rabbis have this thing of the forbidden mixtures. This is what it's talking about in Genesis, where it is talking about the creation, the six days of creation, which is talking about all of the, and I said that the genealogical record of everything that Yahweh made in heaven and in earth, okay? That's all the, the species, the six species, the six days of creation, he made six species of living souls, souls, living, che, nephishes, okay? Those are whole big words to unpack, but the point is, um, in this category, and what with the serpent, definitely um, is the ringleader in creating these secret combinations, these forbidden mixtures. Enoch talks about is the mixing of roots. This is what he's talking about. If you read Genesis, everything was told to reproduce after its kind. All angelic words, all created beings, this is how everything stays squeaky clean, runs efficiently, the whole thing, that is, if things stay within their their established order that Yahweh made them. This is not happened. This is why we have problems. This is what is going to get all cleaned up and it's going to be burnt by fire. So that's where I hope we can end up. What the heck is, what does that mean? Okay, because we got all these really weird. <laughs> so anyways, so Nimrod in the book of Abraham is another phrase that Nimrod was a mighty man of power was a man of mighty power, for he was a master mahon. This was a great little find to hear this word master mahon, which you, you can hear, well, anyways, the, 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 the Luciferian orders are very, very aware of this. This is what they're doing. They are keeping this hybridization um, going forward, believe me. Uh, and had in his hands the secrets of the ancients as they had come down from Cain, wherein he knew the words of power and the signs for using him, he had the holy garments which had been given unto Adam in the garden, to which was great power. And all of this power did Dim God use to gain power after the manner of the secret combinations. Now, I'm just going to, I'm not going to totally unpack that, it's just, but that there is the concept, forbidden combinations, secret combinations, forbidden mixtures. And this is see where we're going at the end of the age, because Satan's been very busy. Um, it's never gone away. It's just been underground, but it's all coming out again. And we're going to have a great um, battle at the end of the age. It's not going to just be, uh, you know, um, it's going to be, uh, everything's coming. <laughs> I mean, read um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the, the war scroll, a polemic work. It, and it talks, it uses a lot of this coded language. But I can't get it. Let's just keep it really, hopefully, a little more simple. But I want you to see these things, okay? So what is always at stake here is truth versus error. But in the pillars here, this concept, because Yahweh did establish, this is a third of the angels, okay, are basically in rebellion. Now, that third has been ramping up to more and more and more as, Yah as Hasatan has been able to kind of, you know, abscound with more and more souls and more hybrids in, oh gosh, I can't even get into this. <laughs> it's a war of armies, it is. Okay, all right, so let's just go back to this, because in the six days of creation, this is Yah made six species. I know this sounds crazy, but what can I say? This is what the literature says. Um, you know, I said we're not in Kansas. We're, we never have been, and I'm not gonna, you know, 
six days of creation, God made six species of living souls. And if you look at the word che and the word um, nephesh, okay? Now he made to inhabit the, the, the material point, okay? Which is, and it was a, it was beautiful. This was how he was showing. And, and we just don't, um, diversity, the diversity, the beauty, the um, incredible intelligence behind this whole creation and that we could all enjoy together. And it was very beautiful. Animal, vegetable, and mineral, okay? With a whole celestial uh, domain above us, and underneath our mother and our, you know, the Godhead, okay? It originally was going to be a wonderful ecosystem that would have just lasted forever, and it will end up being that again. But the heavens are made of angelic orders. You have fire is a word that is used to represent the left side, and the winds is a word to represent the right side. Now, he made, and these are angels. Now, this is something that I just have to read, that we have to just, because it really makes me crazy, and it must make you crazy to to listen to me, the, the zillions of ways in which they, and I'm always saying the sages, the prophets, the scribes, the, whoever wrote all this literature, encrypted these, this whole concept in words, okay? So in the sixth stage of creation, God made six species of living souls, which is comes under the words of fish and fowls and cattle and man, creeping things and beasts of the field. See, I mean, you can't, on the literal level, yeah, I mean, yes, he made, because you have to understand everything is a stamp of what's above it. So yes, he made cattle and we see them and he made fish in the waters but in its deeper esoteric levels it's not talking it is talking about these species of angelic orders um so he made the fish the fowls the cattle the man were the atomic man the beast and the creeping things and these things were all put under the authority or the dominion of the atom the atom came in the first atom okay and he was the uh you know, this, he was, um, you know, the keeper of the, all the different celestial realms, right? And he was like, you know, he was the head honcho over all of these creations, but he was tricked out of this thing. This is sort of all what we know in the storyline on a kind of simple level. But he names all these animals. And, and this is not a little Sunday school story when we understand that this is talking about the mind of Yah is integral in this creation to have deep understanding of all of its biological, electrical, chemical, all of the, the sophisticated, from the tiniest atom to the to the force that it exists, understanding of all these this creation and how it functions and works together. I guess we get, we just, I hate when we just dumb this stuff down and we don't understand the depth of what we're talking about. Anyways, the, the two, the um in the in you read in the literature especially in adam and eve literature you know um they were all told to come and bow down to adam as you know this is now this guy is who you're going to answer he's going to keep it all straight this is in this is all still in the paradise realm everything's going to be great uh but the creep the serpent or what he would be called the um the beast of the field or the fish or the creeping things, he does not, will not come to come and submit to this Adamic Adam Caden, the first Adam, okay? So after the flood, we have a whole problem. There is a lot of problems between uh, this serpent will not submit to this rule of authority. And there's a, this is where you get into a lot of what happened before the flood, a time of great chaos. Okay, so these, there are four in the literature that are basically benign, or I won't say good. They are just, they've been given free will. They are not, now we're talking species of created angelic orders. The, the Adamic man, who we know we are, sons of the, these are all called sons of the living Yah, the fowl, the cattle, the beasts of the field, right? 
these four, the Adamak, the, the, and this is where you get into his man, this is Adamic man. The fowler birds are angels or eagles, because we know that this is an easy one. This was the first one. Everybody should be able to uncode this one, that angels are birds. It's a code for things that are in the celestial realm. The cattle refers to the behemoth, the bull, the ox. These are the Gentile nations. This refers, these are going to be now, um, their realm is in the natural. I mean, you know, birds fly in the air, right? So they're celestial. They're, they're species that are in other domain, domains. But the cattle, the Gentiles are down here. And then you have the beasts of the field. And this is where the beast of the field is a nakash, is a serpent, is a liar. Lion is a dragon. These words all relate is a fish is the word Dagon. Now, I know it's like, so why would not? This is where this group, the serpent group, with the creeping things, which to me are just lower angelic orders. They're really, they have a word of skimmers. These are the little, these are the, this is the, what's really dogging us in the evil inclination. I can't, oh my gosh. Okay, let me just try to get through this. Uh, these are the four sides of the cherubim, the four forms that make up the cherubim, the species. And these are the species that God makes a covenant with Yahweh does that he will not destroy from the face of the earth by water again. But the final judgment, the ones that are still, that are going to be in rebellion at the end of the age, he will destroy by fire. Okay, so that's basically the storyline, okay? Sorry, that's <laughs> what's in the text. Okay, so... Let me go over here. So back over here to, because I said that you have to kind of, let me just start here with angels, because if, to unpack this, we have to understand. Okay, now in Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, because I really believe how Yuda has kept the storyline the straightest of anybody out there, okay? Perfectly, but pretty straight. See, the, the rabbis, um, there was always a big fence around Kabbalah. You had to be 40 years old, married, well-versed in all the fundamental concepts of the Hebrew writings, of the Bible, of the Septuagint, let's say, and all the writings and all the oral Torah. You had to really know it, okay? Because once you got into this deeper level, it, it, you could get lost. And I'll tell you what, Adam and Eve, when you read the story, and especially in, ooh, the writings, I mean, they do get lost of the tree. Oh, what was that writing? It'll come to me because, you know, um, you can get lost in this realm, in these other realms, and never find your way home again. <laughs> Angels are described in Kabbalah literature as forces that send information feelings between mankind and, the God, and Yahweh Elohim, the God of Israel. They are animals analogized to Adam's wavelength channels that help God in his creation. It is therefore reason they should not be worshipped, prayed to, or invoked. And that's where you get into this whole level of magical arts, witchcraft, what the, the, the knowledge that the watcher angels had which they share, which anything they tried for Hasatan the serpent to get an advantage over these uh, races that are still in covenant with Yahweh. It's a it's a it's a war in the heavenlies that spills out over here in the natural constantly. But this whole concept, and this is what I mean, we have to grow up in our understanding that angels are not little, you know, little cherubs. That we are talking, and this I think is what is coming into people's understanding. When we understand, this is why Kabbalah in, in its physics will understand, we understand the forces, the, the energies, the things that are driving behind the scenes. Okay, this kind of makes CERN make sense. What is going on? These are primordial, powerful wavelengths that are set in motion. That are that are first of all, they're intelligent. They have free will. They have a flesh. It's not a human flesh. Paul makes very clear. There's a celestial flesh. I don't understand it all. They are servants. They are agents. All these things. They are created beings. They are part of the living species. They have living souls. Okay, that's all I can say because that's what the literature indicates. They are not physical in nature. They're spiritual beings. 
how this all works, I don't, you know, pretend to have a full understanding, but at least I, I, I know my brain is on the, on the peripheral there. <laughs> so anyways, um, so, and they're always described though anthropomorphically, because how are you going to relate to them, all right? And they are not mature beings, but they are likened to an emotion, a feeling, or a thought. This is the thing. So, this is what we need to understand, that we are at war is in the mind. These angels, these forces, these things can literally, they're just zooming around us. They're just constantly enveloping our electrical, biological, chemical, at, at atomic levels of ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. Okay, we're at a war. These ones, the angels that are, you know, the, the ones that are dogging. In, in, in Hebraic or, or rabbinic literature, whatever, these are called the, the left side. This group of angels, see, originally, Yah made angels. There is a left side. This is what you, you kind of almost have to understand this thing from a Kabbalistic point of view because you have to have the geography, so to speak. You have the high heavens, which is untouched and uncorrupted and pure and really doesn't. It's not about to, uh, let me say this again. It's just pure and untainted. But as it has come down into materiality, these forces have fought against each other. And as you get into more material complexity and you can do more, uh, there is more hybridization, more radical. We think of it about radical evil combinations that come out of this thing. I don't know how to explain. This thing is so deep on so many levels because thoughts, words, emotions, these things are so powerful. And see, this is what Yeshua said because this is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so the, starting with Adam and Eve in the garden a whole bit, the first level attack the serpent did was in the mind, okay? When Yeshua said, for out of the heart are the issues of life. So let me begin to, there are angels of destruction. This is what's really interesting. There are angels that were created that are part of, let's say, Yahweh's police force. Let me put it this way. This is written in the literature. These, there are agents that Yahweh created that literally, if you're not going to do his will in your own free will, <laughs> Well, he's just going to send out a police force. He's just, he has ways. His ways are not our ways. I'm kind of getting you, getting your butt back sometimes to where it needs to be, to bring it back into balance. You know, this is the chastening, the judgment, the, um, the, uh, the judgments, the, ch the chastisements of the Lord. These are the plagues. These are things he does have at his disposal, really and truly. And this is something we haven't really understood very much. A police force. And their job is to enforce his will to a certain extent. If you will not do it, and if you are really a problem in this whole thing, you get totally out of hand, okay? And this is where a lot of the... The, the, the parables of, you know, the jailer will throw you into jail and you'll be there and these, you'll be chastised until you can repent. See, there are hand ways, okay? The ways are not our ways, but this is something we need to understand. So in this left pillar, in this left side, there are, and if you read it not closely, these angels were told, you know, they had authority to do this. They're supposed to only do this stuff under Yahweh's direct orders. But if you read it, it'll tell you a lot of them. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, once they got a taste, they, and if everything's being recorded, everything that they do, and they will come into judgment. This is the one of the really interesting things. They, most, a lot of them have gone way above and beyond what they were ever told or allowed or given permission by them. And he knew this was, and he has been recording it. And it will all be played back to them. This is part of their judgment. And if they have been found wanting, and if they have gone way beyond, and it says you know, many of them have, the chastisements that have come on Israel, it says have been seven, 
given seven times more than what the Lord originally told them their punishments would be. Okay. And they will pay dearly. And that's why we will judge angels. Okay. So, and then a lot of these just purely work under Satan's bidding. Okay. So it's a real mixed bag. It's really, there are some that are just trying to, um, and there's a war in all this. So this stuff, it, it's really interesting, but let's just try to keep it real simple. But in the side, one of the code words is fire. Because in the angels in the heavens, in, and I've been really big into this, unpacking the four elements, earth, wind, air, and fire. And fire is one of them. But what, what I have to say is right now, sorry, when we think of fire, most of we are totally off base. Totally, 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 totally. We're not talking about a campfire. We're not I mean, the fire is, is not anything what we see in the manifestation of the physical. We are talking about electrical fire or luminous fire. There is a something that is um it is a force because you have to understand every this is every force, every soul life, every living thing, angel has a animation to it just like we have a soul and then it's put into our vessel our body there it pulses there is celestial flesh they have and this is what the whole real sun stars mean this whole thing is up there they have physical habitations but they also have their animation their soul life their their is in their forces so this guys you got forces and vessels Okay, you got a soul and a body. You got some, and I don't totally understand how it works in the celestial realms, realms but it, it does. So, anyways, this the celestial realms are made up of two: a fire, these left side angelic hosts, and these right side angelic hosts, which are the breaths. So, what you have in you have the four. This is why it's called, and you, you have, the, you know, this is the upper, and then you have the lower. So, you have these four winds. The upper, which is also in water, and they're in water. For some reason, this is, and these are talking about huge celestial physics. I don't understand it all. Okay, I'm just telling you, but there's, there's the upper waters and the lower waters. So these, this fire and this breath, this air, this wind exists in these waters. So you go figure it <laughs> out. Okay. But these, it's not, it's, it's an electrical. See, so the Nakash, okay, we're going to get down to find him, the serpent, who is Hasatan, who has all of these uh, names, okay, is burnished. He's glowing, okay, he, because his angelic order. So he, he's fire, but again, we have to stay away from the concept of the burning we see in the campfire. It's an inner burn. It's a it's an electrical fire. So it's something electrical that's going on because he is lightning. You have seen his lightning falling from heaven, and it glows. It's burnished. It's part of him. That's the angel of light. There is a there is an electrical light. That's the fire we're talking about. Okay. So this is associated with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See these angels on the left side. That these this police force. <laughs> Uh, are to there to enforce good and evil. They're there to enforce if they are called upon or whatever, given permission, Yahweh's. So, so there's curses and blessings. So if you're, if you happen to get over into the left side and you come under a curse of chastisement or these things, this is what is going on. Okay. What can I say? Now the serpent is known as, uh, okay. Serpent is in the garden story. That's what we get. He's a, he's a serpent. He's an angelic word. See, this is where, and I have to say, it, he is a created being. He is not, he's, you know, he's an angelic order. If he's a seraphim, a cherubim, uh, you know, he is called the Hebrew word is in the kosh. Uh, I tend to think that there, it, this gets a little more complicated. Lucifer. I can't even go there. Let's just try to keep, let's leave him out of the equation. Because really and truly, Lucifer and the serpent are different entities, okay? I just want to do this thing about the watchers, fallen angels, they are fire. They are, this one is called fiery stone. So when he talks about in Ezekiel, 
how Lucifer is the fallen angel. Yes, but see, I think Lucifer is his refers to him in his the concept of his forces, his powers, his emanations, his abilities, his animation. Okay, the serpent is what he in is in, in, in many times is housed in. Like okay, so we're soul in a body. He is a, a powerful emanation, high ordered endo force who has a manifestation in this as a serpent, as the serpent, okay? Which we know is hostile, which is very many, to, refers to fire and water are have major roles in dragon lore. This is the dragon, see this is why it's all over dragon boo This is the big thing. Adam and Eve, it, okay, so this is what, all right, so how do I explain this? How does anybody even try to make sense of this? I hope I'm not biting off two more than I can chew. Okay. This left side, this fire, which is the, known as the severity God, his police work, there is the serpent. Okay. Now, when you get into, okay, before I get back to him, let me just say this one thing. I wanted to make this clear again so we know because he is a beast. Okay, so he has so many names. All right, so he is a beast. He is a lion. He is a uh, a wild beast. He is a fiery serpent. He is the dragon. It all comes. A lot of this comes. He is. He is actually the Leviathan. Okay. Again, there are so many words that are describing. Uh, he's the beast. He's the Nakash. Have I said these enough? He is Samuel. Okay, and he has created these creeping things, this hybrid race, the goat, the canines, which is sort of what's playing out down here with us. So we got the dragon, the serpent, the devil thing. Okay, so this being uh, is what Eve had interaction with. Okay, so what does this say? So in other words, this is how it has to happen, and this is why. This is a huge... I haven't really gone through this yet, but this is something we need to understand. Body, soul, and spirit, or let's say spirit, soul, and body, refers to the different realms. we believe, you know, living species, things are going on up there. Okay, we have, and oh my gosh, anytime, and this is where there always is the archetypes, the, you can apply it to the biggest, broadest, philosophical concept and you can get it down to total boots on the ground. It, it, it should be able to go totally, the archetype, the template should fit no matter where you're going on this thing, up or down, on Jacob's ladder, whatever. The, the Eve had, the discussion starts with Eve and the serpent, right? She is in, now this is, again, Eve, we can't think of her in this context in her soul life at this point, she is Adam's other half, the, co the, the male and the female persona. She is one of the main emanations of the female that Yah is using to move this whole creation forward, down, out, out there, okay? She is uh, in paradise. This is a place now. We're at a place now. We're coming down the storyline a little bit. Her, in order, and this is how it happens for all of us. So it happened to Eve, but it happens to us. This is the point. You, can, you have to be, you have to come into agreement. And this is, starts the whole process in us of the evil inclination, the two angels now, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, and this is in our brain again, this gets back to the villa pillar, I mean to the right hand, to the left side. Our brain is a complete template of this thing. These are, so we have this Seban who, in other words, he is on the same level as he. These are high primordial firstborns. I mean, I can't even. <laughs> she is the progenitor of all of the living species and souls that are going to come from her, right? The serpent we know is 
And if you're on your Kabbalah thing, is on the left side in Gibora. I mean, this is there's a geographic place, paradise. I guess it's, okay. there's a place. There's it's a realm. It's a dimension. I don't know where it is, but it's there. She is in conversation. She is, you know, maybe it's mental telepathy. Who knows? There is an exchange of ideas going on here. There is a conceptual thing going on. She is being enticed. And this is where it says, Adam, uh, let me just see if I can find my note here where I can flush it about the food. So she's, you know, to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the serpent is over here. He is his designation, his origination, his place of function. His, he is on this side of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. He is part of the police force. Okay. He's, probably, he's the head of the police force, so to speak. But he is already in rebellion. He will not submit to this concept of this Adamic. Adam having dominion over him, whatever, because it gets into the hierarchy, it gets into, okay, see this, some of the words, the, the tree Eve talked to, okay, so it's not a tree, it's a beast, it's a created being, it's a serpent, it's the Nakash, it's Satan, it's Samuel, whatever, okay, but the point is, this is the beginning of the first, this is the first hibernization conversation. Okay, really and truly. And she has to come into agreement that because he cannot just, there is the free will. She has to agree to the plan. And this is in our minds. Again, this is how sin, the evil inclination, these angels, they get, they get us into conversation. They get us engaged. They get us to look, consider, hmm, do we or don't? want to do this, eat this, you know, see this, whatever, okay? Anything that come into our gates. Oh my gosh, there's just all right. So anyways, the, the Bible uses the analogy of food, okay? Um and food is a code word for reproduction because as as things uh you know it's like in if you're gonna make a recipe, you put different foods together, okay? And then you do everything and you come up with something. This is what's really, there are laws of this, but he was very clear that the species were not to commingle. All right. So you have a species of serpent, you have the, the first Adamic consort with, with Adam. So in the first level, in the mind, this is the point. The first fall happens in the mind. And this is why a lot of times the church, we just wanted to keep it there. Well, you just sin in your mind. You know, you come into agreement. Sin is to miss the mark, you, which is true. But it, we cannot not, this is the most important place because he's for out of the heart. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. I might just have to just say a few things and end this thing record this and come right back because it's getting too long but anyways adam is known in another code word as the male who was first i don't have a problem because we are talking about an emanation a, 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 a going forward of this you know he spoke yet now what adam spoke he put things into motion the first and these are all was the male principle okay this gets and, the, and then the female follows shortly after, just right there. And actually, in their code, they actually code do this. But technically, and this is what Paul was saying, the male was created first, and then the female. Okay, whatever. Uh, as she comes into agreement with this serpent, that they will cross-pollinate. See, this is, this is where... He died on a cross because the problem with this cross-pollination of these huge primordial, oh my gosh, angelic principalities, we are still dealing from these ramifications. But it happens in the mind first. What, so he was the tree of good and evil. He was the, and he, the serpent was created ruler over the beasts and the animals. But Adam and Eve were at a higher level. So she is lowering herself. She's kind of, this is where you get a lot of these kinds of, you know, she was lowering her station. She was, she was combing over someone beneath her station, okay? 
This is sort of the idea that's going on here. He, you know, he tricked her, he beguiled her, he seduced her. She, she just sort of went with it. Now, the reason she did, okay, and this is what is really a key to understand. And if I can even get this and end here. So you have Adam cave in, is in, in the highest sense, the highest form of Yahweh Elohim expression is intellect, is mind, is reason, is his, is his pure essence perfection. Okay, in the mind of Yahweh. The second thing, Eve represents, and that's the highest heaven. Okay, Eve represents archetypally coming down the pike in this. The, so Adam is up here representing the spiritual domain. Eve represents a, just a little bit lower concept of emanations that produce our soul life. In other words, she, this is a place of, okay, so the head and the heart, okay? Because this whole thing got out of coil. Because we are creatures made in the image of Yah. This means we are rational. This is why we are not to be ruled by our senses. The beast over here is in a sense, and he's called a beast because he is the king over, um, where did I say? He, is the, he rules over the beasts and the animals, any order that is below that. Those are all in his domain. Okay, he cannot rule over the atom that's already been established, that race of created beings. But starting out under that, you have Adam, then you have the beasts and the fish and the creeping big worm. He has a hierarchical dominion to rule over that. She is um, of the higher orders. And as she crosses over with this being, Okay, in her mind. Then the next thing that happens is, and this is where you get into fire. This is fire's relationship with carnal passions. Okay, because the beast not only this electrical or luminous fire, this is always associated with, in its negative sense, the passions, the going beyond to be inflamed. You get the concept of fire, passion. You no longer start thinking rationally. You do things according to your passion, your appetite, your lust, your pleasures, all things that are lower on the scale, all right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the good things of God, but we know that eventually it gets out of balance. You know, wine is a good, good makes the heart merry. But if wine becomes drunkenness, we have a problem and it produces every evil work. So this is the point. You have to keep things in balance. If you're, if you're doing it right at the very top, you're in balance. The left pillar and the right pillar, and then you're, you're balanced by the middle pillar. Okay? Because the goodness and severity of God, there's times, you know, you know you've got to be aware and you've got to use. Uh, severity but also see that's why in the verse it says he always wished that we would have just not boiled this thing all down to just plain dry ritual which had no spiritual any said he said justice and mercy that's what I'm interested in that's what he's at the top of the pillar here um, the, 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 the justice and the mercy of God that's what we need to understand to be able to be as the priests and kings to keep things in balance, okay? And history just tells the rest of the story. But I think what's important to understand is Eve, this thing never would have gotten off the ground if Eve had not come into agreement in her intellectual capacity to, to allow a lower realm. Now remember everything, it's all good. But when it gets out of balance, or if it's a cross, so to speak, a cross. So, so in other words, this is the beginning of, you know, where you're inflamed by your passions, carnal, oh, that's all the word, uh, uh, 
carnal, well, carnal relations, all these things really do apply to finally, you know, if your passions get the best of you and boom, it, uh, the, the deed is done. Okay, so basically, but what we have to understand in the soul category, in our soul, which represents our heart, this is where a lot of times, once you come into mental agreement with the uh, concept, the, the sin, you know, and this is where, this is the whole concept. Now we, at this point, we have an evil inclination. We have a good angel and a bad angel. And there's a constant dialogue going on in our psyche, in our spheres, right brain, left brain, should I, shouldn't I, this whole concept. Yahweh is our middle pillar. When you come into, we just say this now, when you come into, um, as a Gentile, especially, as the, into agreement with Yeshua, he becomes your peace. He is able to quiet <laughs> the evil inclination and eventually as you learn Torah and you grow in this thing and you can kill the flesh you get you totally get control and you get victory over the serpent the evil inclination the part of us see because what happened when he found this the serpent got the upper hand and now it's flip-flopped in us now we are animals that are ruled by our passion and we have to work hard at keeping it things at a higher level. Um, we have to work out our salvation. We have to actually consciously decide to do Torah. Okay, it doesn't come as naturally anymore. This is where, um, and this is where, now Satan is 100% the satanic, Kingdom 100% now has dominion, entrance, rulership, the ability to influence us in our passions, our soul life, our appetites, our desires, um, and you know, the rest is history. And until Yeshua comes into our being and is able to make peace, separate the two sides. That's why he says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He is the middle wall. He is the peace. There's no longer, because the Gentiles were totally under the influence and the rule of this satanic hierarchy king. This is part of the story. Israel at least had the Torah. This way. So if they followed the Torah concepts and archings in the Day of Atonement, all this kind of stuff, they were untouchable, they had peace, they were cleansed, they were good to go. So this is sort of the contrast. But praise Yahweh that he, you know, was the great sacrifice and was able to be, uh, to break down that middle wall, or to, to, uh, you know, like so that the Gentiles could come in. But the problem is today we have this concept now, well, once you're in, you're good. Well, no, you're just starting to climb the ladder. Without holiness, no one's going to see the Lord. This is the biggest delusion in the world today amongst Gentile Christianity is that you don't need to be a Torah keeper. You don't need to really cleanse your whole self, body, soul, and spirit and present yourself blameless. You know, but I don't know what, you, you know, how could we be thinking this when really and truly, I mean, it's very clear in the scriptures, especially in the Pauline um scriptures that we have to still work out our salvation but those are whole other side issues so when you get down to this concept and let me end on this on fire okay because in the end times those who are not kind of have not made peace are not back into the house so to speak so many analogies we're saying this the world is going to be judged by fire, meaning uh, this Hasatan is going to have his fiery serpents and all his hybrids with this and his creeping thing, all these different, are going to have authority to sift the nations. Okay, and this is what we're coming into. This is the chaos, the great tribulation is going to be a flat out. And the kings of the earth, just like in the time of Enoch, they, 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 they fought against each other and they eventually destroyed each other. They're going to fight against the nations are fighting against each other and eventually they will come and fight against the Lord and his elect armies. But at that point, the, the, 
the ship will be right in, so to speak, and there'll be a whole different outcome. Let me end on this note. Because one of the code words for the serpent is the beast. And I think, in, you know, in the book of Revelation, uh, see, some of these code words, it just gets me crazy when people have no understanding and they don't want to understand from a Hebraic point of view. But let me just finish two things. If you have any more of the mark of the beast, see, this is the point. If you are still in the soul category, ruled by your passions, your lust, your desires, if you have not the victory that is in Yeshua, these are ways that he will have the authority to try you, to test you, to burn you with fire, okay, in this last conflagration and when i say conflagration i'm not talking about the campfire it's not like it's going to burn like a fire like like the wild fire okay that's even though like we're seeing today there will be great physical calamities fires will be look at look at the whole north uh south you know california and oregon and washington on the fires okay these are all physical manifestations yes but when it says, and let me just go one quick side to the dark side, so to speak. When it talks about a lot of times, um, enchanters, observers of time, soothsayers, sorcerers, witchcraft, the, the satanic rituals that are designed and designated to open up pathways, doors, gates, access to spiritual realms, to these angelic host to do the TV burning one okay that's another phrase from the burning one with to come into contact with angels of fire okay uh so this is where it needs to pass through the fire a lot of times in the old testament they would make them pass through the fire rituals that will get you into contact with um angelic entity that have powers and abilities to do harm and to bring destruction and to you know every evil work this is sort of what the whole lawless um secret power of lawlessness is about they're still releasing these energies angelic forces these negative things on us and those forces are like unwitting and don't really you know you put a bag over your head like somebody's pounding you when we have access to um come under the protection of the father through the son to be um see so that's why i'm not really worried about the end times because the elect we will understand us we will have authority over these beasts now this is my last i'm going to try to I want to give two more archetypal things that are going on in all of this because i was back to daniel's four beasts he sees and this is where looking at hebrew words and understanding these things you got to understand where you are in the hierarchy and what you're told paul calls these things principalities and powers if we should look at some of the ancient and it's usually the mystics that get into this either a list of the angelic orders, the nine, the seraphim, the cherubim, the powers, the principalities, the angels. I mean, there's a lot of the thrones, the dominions, there's a lot of different words for these things. If you don't want to be called them. Okay. Uh, but these Satan's grouping is called the wild beasts of the field. Okay. And they have iron teeth. This is the mixing of iron and clay. It talks about in the literature, okay, so so the four beast kingdoms, these are that are allowed to sift the nation, sift Israel. And as Israel, because Israel is scattered into the nations, it also sifts the nations at the same time. You have the kingdom of gold or the lion with the wings of an eagle. This is a principality that is allowed for a season. I believe that you get into um Babylon is in this kingdom. Then you have the bear. These are just 
archetypal or symbolic or allegorical um, words describing the four winds of heaven. That's another four. These are the these are the four winds of heaven. Celestial angelic orders on the left side that have authority and power, even though many times they exceed it, to inflict punishment, harm, chastisement, curses, negativity, every evil word. Then you have the leopard. Then you have the fourth beast kingdom, which is iron, which is different from all the others. Ten horns. You know, this gets, this is so apocryphal. I wouldn't even want to begin to do this. But what we need to understand, these are referred to as the four winds of heaven, even though there's, and out of that grouping, some are good, some are bad, some are, this whole thing has to be put back in order. We just don't understand what a big job Yahweh is doing, Yeshua. Um, and at the end of the age, which we are, the nations will be allowed, they will have free reign over the nations that are not submitted to Yahweh, not protected, not in his barn, however you want to talk about it. And this, it's fire because it is representing these serpentine flaming, or in other words, these, these uh, burning ones these glowing ones, these angelic races that are made up of fire versus his angels, which are wind and breath. They're more, they're, I mean, next time I'll do a whole thing on the, quote unquote, the names for the good angels, so to speak. But you have to contrast these four winds of heaven, okay? Because there's always what's going on in the celestial. And then there's always what's going on down here in the natural. And the natural is really our creating universe that we can, you know, it includes the atmospheric heavens we have. It includes uh, below, okay, below the earth. And I didn't even get into Haiti. See this, oh my gosh. I guess, six, okay, the four corners of the earth which refers to the four elements, which is the other side of the story, which refers to the body. So when you have to, there's always, this is the dualism. You always have words that describe what's going on in the lower realms and words that describe what is going on in the upper realms, okay? Now, uh, the last thing let me say here is that in terms of this judgment that's coming by fire. Okay, so I think that this is, I hope I sort of made a dent in that. Let me just look at my notes here. Uh, and event, at the end of this thing, Hasatan will be locked up. <laughs> he will no longer be used as the policeman, so to speak, and all of this. Uh, those, you know, it's, you know, the false prophet, the beast, these things are all, you know, how, what are the natural boots on the ground that are going to be in league with the angelic host? This is sort of how a lot of that terminology and revelation is kind of couching this thing. But uh, as we get into, um, in, like I said with this one quote in the Gospel of Nicodemus, O oh, Prince Satan, this is a put or the great serpent, Leviathan, thou keeper of the infernal regions. This is where these angelic hosts are, these burning with, you know, they're not, their their realm is in Hades. See, this is why a lot of the terminology they want to drag souls down. Because Satan has some, this is sort of, I mean, he is trying to take the good souls, the souls that are committed to Yahweh. And he's trying to you know, constantly dragged down into the lower realms, the, the, you know, and this is the dredges. This is sort of um, how the, the, the anthropomorphic words are describing the lower realm. Um, 
the abyss. Yeah, uh, this is all a domain. A do if, you know, med geographically, if it's lower, it, because in no way it's lower in the sense in a hierarchical sense. If it's lower in the actual geography, I guess I would assume it is. So, but O oh, Prince Satan, the great serpent, that great keeper of the infernal regions, uh, the abyss, all thy advantages which thou dost acquire by the forbidden tree. In other words, as the knowledge of good and evil, having your dominion, your authority, there, and crossing over and, and creating a whole hybrid race with Eve, uh, in the loss of paradise that happened for all of you, thou hast now lost by the wood of the cross. In other words, Yeshua has sort of, he has bought, brought back, bought back all the souls. Everyone now will be judged according to his works. It's, it's so, I mean, I guess you can't figure, you couldn't have made this up. I swear, this story, this drama, this thing that is going on is so huge. And I don't know why people, well, you can just walk away from it and turn your mind off because it is just sort of overwhelming. Or you can be elect with this or anything. There's a people on the planet. We're not going to walk away. We're not going to turn back. We're going to keep pressing in. I mean, we don't all agree. <laughs> but it's there. It's out there. These books, the things have been over, the, the, the knowledges, the understandings, the wisdoms, the worldview of the ancients is coming back to us and it's being pieced together. And um, it's pretty crazy. Hey, Beazelbub was another name. Lord of the Flies. I mean, how many do you want? <laughs> It gets crazy. So let me end here. Let me go and review all my notes. Let me get back to some of the, you know, again, what I want to make sure that I communicated and see what I need to mop up and do again. Hey, at the end of the age, it's here. I hope that you have made your peace with, with um, Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yeshua. And um, let's get excited because this thing is going to end unbelievably as the elector revealed, revealed the manifestation of the sons of God. So, Shabbat Shalom. Peace.